Last night it rained a bit and that's given all of the foliage here a nice dusting of water droplets which looks absolutely wonderful. I've been exploring around looking for interesting subjects to photograph with the water droplets but I've found a lot of spider webs as well and here with this wood pile there are quite a few spider webs. I found one in particular that's in a good open space so I'm going to try and set up and see if I can get a great shot of the spider web with the water droplets on it. Of course, one of the challenges here is that I don't want to disturb the spider web. It's obviously very fragile, and so I need to be very careful where I move. The spider web is attached up on this log, and then it continues down into the foliage down here. So I just want to move about very, very carefully. Of course, I want to get my tripod set up, and so I'll be very careful doing that. I'm going to get the legs spread out over here, and then I'll move it into position and watching those legs as I lower it down into the foliage to make sure that I don't touch the spider web and that I don't touch the foliage that it's attached to. Now, one of the challenges in this particular position, there's so much foliage that things are pretty soft. I don't have a very stable platform, and underneath the foliage, it's also a little bit of soft mud, and so I'm gonna push the tripod down into the ground a little bit to try to get it as stable as possible. And then I'll get the camera mounted on the ball head. And at this point too, one of the things to keep in mind with macro photography, we're working very close to the subject. And if the lens touches that spider web, it's going to damage it, uh, ruining the home for the spider, but also ruining my opportunity to get a photo here. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm not getting too close. And then I'll get the camera turned on. And just to get started, I'll turn on my live view and adjust the position here, get my focus set so that I can actually see the spider web, and then look for a nice position here. First off, I wanna try and make sure that I'm gonna stay parallel as it were. I'm gonna have the lens orthogonal to the plane of that spider web so that all of the bits, all the pieces of the web will be about the same distance from the lens. And so the subject I find, I want it to be right in front of the lens. There we go, that looks pretty good and then I'll fine tune my focus a little bit here and lock down the tripod, making sure that it's firmly positioned. For the spider web here, I don't have much behind it and that's good because I won't have to worry about depth of field revealing clutter off in the background. I'm gonna stop down, I think F16 or maybe even F22 should do the trick. I'm gonna start off with F16 and I think just because I'm a little bit worried about motion, both the camera, because it's a little bit unstable here on the foliage, on the, the soft ground, and also because obviously that spider web can move around quite a bit in the breeze. So I'm gonna increase my ISO to 400 to make sure that I can get a reasonably fast shutter speed. At F16, I'm still ending up with about a tenth of a second exposure. So still a little bit slow, but there's no breeze at the moment. I don't think I'm gonna have to worry too much about motion. I just wanna try to get a reasonably fast shutter speed. I'll go ahead and connect the cable release, of course. This is always important for macro photography, but especially at the moment, once again, the spider web is certainly able to move, but if I were to push the shutter release button on the camera, I would most certainly move the tripod just a little bit because of that soft ground. So I'll go ahead and get set up and take a quick test shot just to kind of evaluate. Well, the water droplets look great. The spider web is looking very nice. I like the overall composition. I like the way I have things framed up with the spider web going across the frame. The only trouble is, behind the spider web, there's a log, and it's rather bright, and it's just not a very good color to go along with the spider web. I'm gonna take a couple of leaves, actually. There's some large, broad leaves that I've found here. And I think these will work well as a more natural backdrop for the spider web, for the water droplets on the spider web in particular. And so I'm going to take a couple of these. And with everything set, I'll double check, make sure that my focus is spot on and that my camera settings are exactly as I want them. And then I'm going to position the leaves behind the spider web. Again, being very careful not to touch, especially with my arm here or even with the leaves. I'll get the leaves positioned back behind as far away as possible just so that they won't be rendered in focus. And I'll hold them in position and then using the cable release in my other hand, I'll go ahead and trigger the shutter. Ah, that looks much, much better.
Now I have a texture of leaf, just a very subtle amount of texture. I've stopped down to F16 so I can see some striations in the leaf in the background, but overall it's all about the water droplets on that spider web with a nice clean background that has an appropriate color for the natural world where I'm photographing. So I've taken the time to carefully consider the setup, my position, and how I can creatively approach the subject, especially in this case. I can't move the subject and so I need to try to find a way to deal with that background, but I've taken all of these pieces and put them together to produce a photograph that I'm happy with.